Dear Hollywood, Thank you so much for looking into remaking Big Trouble in Little China, one of my favorite movies when I was a kid, and also looking into making an adaptation of the much-beloved Lumberjanes comic book. And if I have one piece of advice for you, it would be, DON'T SCREW THIS UP! Yes, hello there folks, it's me, Professor Thor Gee, Aaron, your guide to all things geeky, and thank god there's news again! It's been, what, three weeks since the last weekly geekly report? This was about to become a monthly geekly report. Yes, this week there were adaptations of two properties coming for the next couple of years, and I am excited, hesitant? Is there some weird, like, German word for when you're excited about something, but you're also very nervous of all the ways it could go wrong? No offense to the Germans, but if anybody's gonna have a word for that, it's gonna be you guys. The first announcement is that The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, has announced that he is not only going to star, but also produce an upcoming remake of Big Trouble in Little China. Now, Big Trouble in Little China was one of my favorite movies when I was, I don't really want to say kid, but like early teens to late teens, like during that time period, I loved that film and watched it constantly. And I originally went back and watched it again, and I'll admit, it doesn't totally hold up. But even if it doesn't fully hold up, it is still a cult classic. It does still have tons of stuff about it that we fans of it to this day still love. It had great action, great comedy, special effects were goofy, but for the time, it was kind of impressive. Now, for those of you who don't know what Big Trouble in Little China is, first off, shame on you. And secondly, it was a movie set in the 80s that was kind of a commentary on the American action films of the time and the Chinese action films of the time. And it was basically kind of poking fun at the American action films. Because you've got this character, Jack Burton. Who? Him. Jack Burton. Played by Kurt Russell. And he was meant to be kind of like a commentary on those everyman kind of action heroes of the 80s. You know, where he was just, he was a trucker, but he was one of those truckers who just drove around the country just kicking ass. He was very much kind of like a diehard kind of character. And he ends up going to Chinatown. And he just sort of stumbles into an already in progress Chinese action film. Like, he gets there and there's pre established characters, and there's a backstory, and there's all this stuff that he doesn't understand because this has been going on forever. And he just shows up and he's like, Well, I'm going to help you guys because there's this gang of criminals and demons trying to resurrect Lo Pan, played by the amazing James Hong. And he comes in and just makes a buffoon out of himself. But not really, it's not just like a flat out like shame on the American films, they're terrible. It does actually love the American film, like it kind of salutes how goofy they were at the time. Because, yeah, he's a moron compared to everyone else here. Like it very much does just say, alright, the Chinese action films, they were the real stars. But, he does have his uses, he does kind of come in and just go, why are we bothering with all this, let's just go kick some ass. And sometimes you need a guy who just comes in and says, let's kick some ass. But, here's my concern about this remake. As I said, I loved that film when I was a kid, but I loved it for what it was. I loved it because it was kind of goofy, and there are a lot of fans of that these days who look back on it and kind of reflect on it with a warped memory. They look back on it like, oh yeah, Jack Burton, he, that dude kicked ass. That guy was a number one action hero. No, he wasn't. That dude was a joke. And that was the point, is that he was a joke. This is a guy who literally is so stupid, he knocks himself out with concrete in the middle of the movie. In fact, there's actually a wonderful Big Trouble in Little China comic book that is out right now but from Boom Comics, and it's even co-written by John Carpenter, the guy who directed the original film. And that to me shows how the original creator viewed this character versus how a lot of the fans do. Because in this comic, which takes place right after the movie, yeah, he is a total moron. Once again, he is slipping and falling and he is just being a total doofus. But that is why we love that character. And that's what has me so concerned about this news of the upcoming movie because did you guys just see that trailer they put out for the new Point Break remake? Yeah, that's another one of those 80s movies that was kind of tongue in cheek and kind of played up for laughs a little bit. Not a lot, not as nearly as much as Big Trouble in Little China, but it didn't take itself that seriously. And did you see the trailer for the remake? It's taking itself that seriously. Like, that's another one of those properties that was seen by a bunch of people when they were younger, and now that they're older, they're like, yeah, man, that movie was just pure, hardcore action, just grit and seriousness. No, it wasn't. It was about extreme sports people robbing banks, okay? This was not a serious film. And that trailer makes it look like that is exactly what they're doing. And I'm worried that they're going to do the exact same thing with Big Trouble in Little China. And this is the thing that has me both suspicious that they're going to do it and hopeful that they won't, is that it's Dwayne The Rock Johnson behind it, okay? 
Now here's the hopeful side of that scenario, is that Dwayne The Rock Johnson is hilarious. That dude has a great sense of humor, and also he's one of the most charismatic actors out there, okay? He's definitely the most charismatic action hero out there. He's that action hero we all wanted when we were kids. Remember when we were kids and everybody was like, oh, Schwarzenegger is the most charismatic guy out there? No, he wasn't. All right. He was just the most charismatic action hero out there. If normal people charisma is here, and action hero charisma is down here, Schwarzenegger was just the only guy who was like, here, from the action heroes, all right? Which, by the way, these are all scientific measurements, all right? But Dwayne Johnson is the only action hero whose charisma is actually here. It's actually up there, all right? He's actually a charismatic dude. He could absolutely play Jack Burton, except, Here's the thing about Jack Burton is that, as I said, he was kind of the everyman and that loaned itself to him getting his ass kicked constantly throughout this thing and that being played up for laughs. Take a look at Dwayne The Rock Johnson. That ain't the average man. Look at Jack Burton. Kurt Russell back then, he was definitely in shape. That was definitely a guy who worked out. I am not trying to put that down. Hell, Kurt Russell these days even looks pretty good. But Jack Burton... Hell man, I could have been Jack Burton. Just give me a gym membership and a month and I could have made that happen. In order for me or any other average man to become The Rock, you gotta throw us down a well full of nothing but protein shakes and barbells for a year. That's the only way that's going to happen. And when I look at Dwayne The Rock Johnson, I'm like, no way is that guy going to get his ass kicked throughout this film. No way is anyone gonna be able to come up to him and just do some special kung fu moves and take him down. No way is he going to have a piece of concrete fall on his head. Piece of concrete falls on his head, it shatters into diamonds, and then he just picks them all up and throws them and kills all the ninjas. That's the magic of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Did you see his last movie? I didn't, but I'm pretty sure he stopped an earthquake by punching it. No? That's not what happened? Oh. Wouldn't have made a better movie though, right? Yeah. And as I said, The Rock has got a great sense of humor, but every single time in which he makes a movie where he's the butt of the joke, like say, The Tooth Fairy, it doesn't go well for him. So I have a feeling like just based on his own experience, he's gonna come in there and go, man, people don't wanna see me getting my ass kicked. They wanna see me kicking ass. Now, as I said, when the original Big Trouble in Little China was made back in the 80s, it was a commentary on the action heroes of the 80s. And our action heroes have changed since then. The action heroes today are no longer the average person. Today, just look at the Fast and the Furious. The action heroes are superhuman. Like, the Rock was basically the Hulk in the last Fast and the Furious movie, so I can understand them trying to change this and adapt it, so if Jack Burton is no longer an average man and he's no longer just getting his ass kicked throughout this, I understand, as long as you keep the sense of humor. Do not go serious with this thing. Realize what you're making, realize why that's cool, and go for it. Now here's the other big piece of news from the world of film adaptations that I am excited and hesitant about. Lumberjanes, the hit indie series, once again from Boom Studios. Damn, Boom, you are just kicking ass. That comic is going to be adapted into a movie. Now, Lumberjanes is an amazing young reader's book. It's a great book for anybody of any age, but it's especially great for young readers, especially young girls. It is about a group of girls at a summer camp and strange, mysterious things start going on and not really like creepy mysteries, but more of like once again, kind of a humorous take on the creepy. Like, there are hipster yetis out there in the woods, all right? That's the kind of cool stuff that it does. And it's super creative and super fun. And it's got a very unique, wonderful voice on its own. And that is why I am deeply concerned that it's going to get screwed over. Let's take a look at what Lumberjanes is. All right, first off, it's super original. It does the best job of pretty much any independent book out there right now of capturing its own voice. It does not try to be anything else. It is its own thing, and that is super rare these days. And also, it has a cast that is all women. The entire cast of that book is not only women, but very largely women of color. It does the best job of giving women of color representation in a medium today. I can't name any other series out there that does that good of a job. And also, it's one of the only books out there that has a strong lesbian love story going on in the book. And I applaud it for that, and it does it so well. And those are all the things that make Lumberjane such a great original series. It is also all the things that a studio executive would see and go, wait, what did we just agree to make? No, we're gonna shut that down. And this wasn't picked up by some small indie company, all right? This is not going to be Wes Anderson Lumberjanes. This was picked up by 20th Century Fox, all right? There is no way that the people at 20th Century Fox are not going to come in there and say, yeah, we read over what you have, 
and we have a few notes, all right? Market research is one of the biggest tools at 20th Century Fox's disposal, and it's one of the things that ruins so many movies. I should know, I used to work for a market research company, all right? I guarantee you that at some point in time, representatives from 20th Century Fox are going to come in and say, yeah, well, we did the research, and it looks like in the Midwest that the lesbian love story isn't going to work, so we're gonna scrap that. And then it also looks like all the women of color, you know, we did the research. Films that tend to star a lot of women of color don't do as well as others. So, you know, if we could just whiten a couple of these characters up, do not let that happen, all right? To everyone out there who is working on the Lumberjanes comic, make sure that you retain just enough creative control on it that you can tell them no when they try to change their characters. Because Lumberjanes is one of the most important comics out there, especially, like I said, for young readers and young female readers, a group that does not get nearly enough attention in the rest of media. This could be your moment to make a truly important film, and you can't let the studio come in and change that. But, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am worried over absolutely nothing. Maybe movie studios have finally begun to change. Maybe they have finally realized that fun is not a four-letter word. Maybe it is time that they have actually realized the strength and power of a young female audience. And maybe it is time that they have realized that they should stop trying to bland down and mute all the things that young female audience... Oh, God! No! 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 Now, as I said, Lumberjanes is a great series for young readers and really captured a wide range of characters and it was full of young heroes. And you know what other series did that really well? Runaways. Runaways was a property from Marvel that has a die-hard fan base, and for a long time Marvel has been kind of teasing that they might do something with it, they might not, but one of my followers has actually taken it upon themselves to say, you know what, I'm done waiting, I'm gonna do it myself. And I received this message on Twitter, which by the way, you can follow me on Twitter at this link right here. Okay. But I received this message on Twitter from Raul Collins at level complete, which is at LVL underscore completed. I will also have that link right here and in the descriptions below. But he said, hey, Professor Thorgy, I'm making a Runaways fan film and was wondering if you could help us let people know, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. If you want to know more about this Runaways fan film, then follow Raul Collins uh, at L-V-L underscore C-O-M-P-L-E-T-E-D. As I said once again, that will be in the descriptions below. Thank you very much. And if you guys want more from me, then come back next time by subscribing and also hit that thumb up and share. You guys know the deal. I love it whenever I see any of you guys sharing these videos. It always makes me feel so good. And as always, I want to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments down below. What other upcoming adaptations of independent comics would you guys like to see? If Lumberjanes is going to get, and if it succeeds, you know they're going to start buying up all the books out there. So, let me hear that from you guys, and check out my other videos on the page. I recently did one, which is all about my ideas for the upcoming Nintendo theme park. I worked really hard on that one, guys, so if you could just check it out, I would appreciate it so much. But, thank you guys very much, and come back next time.